Hey everybody, Tall Family Films here. Today's project is to replace the sway bar bushings. Um, this is what kind of stabilizes the car when you go around a curve and, and when you're turning and turning going around a curve. So um, start by putting the car on a jack stand. You need to jack it up obviously, but you want it to be on a jack stand because you're going to need the jack and you're going to see why that is. So go ahead and put it up onto the jack stand, remove all of the lug nuts so that we have good access to the sway bar. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is the sway bar is under a good amount of tension and the bushings are these rubber plates kind of that hold the bar, keep it from squeaking and rubbing against things and you can't get those rubber bushings out if the sway bar is still attached. So we're going to start by removing the sway bar to get to the bushing and you can see it right here. Let's get a closer look. So that's the sway bar bushing right in there. So here we're removing the sway bar end link and this will release the, the tension on the sway bar but and sometimes you'll just these will come right out but you can see this one's not there's is a lot of it's tight here it's not coming out so what i need to do is raise up the knuckle a little bit so that it takes the tension off of the end link so now it just pops right out okay very simple so now all the sway bar is completely loose right now it'll actually rock back and forth which you're going to need it to do as you do this project so again right in here is the sway bar bushing that we're going to be replacing. Okay, so the rubber bushing for the sway bar is held in with a metal bracket. And the bracket is secured by two bolts, one on the north and one on the south side. These bolts have been in here for quite some time. You will not be able to just pop them out with a ratchet. I'm using a breaker bar here and it's actually a struggle to get them to break loose with this breaker bar. Another thing I'm using is a wobble extension. Um, I don't know if it has a proper name, but that's all I've ever heard it referred to as. But it is an extension for a socket that does not have a completely square head. It's kind of rounded, so it allows a lot of flexibility and movement with between the extension and the socket itself. So you can get into tight spaces with it pretty easy. Which you can see, um, I'm struggling here to get it into this tight space, but eventually, uh, this does succeed and I'm able to loosen that bolt up and we can go in with a power ratchet and finish it up. Even with a regular ratchet, there's not a lot of room in here, so that's why I'm using a power ratchet right here, is so that I don't have to go back and forth 10,000 times to get the bolt out. Alright, so um, once both bolts are removed, the bracket itself should come out pretty simply. You will probably need a screwdriver to pry it off of the rubber bushing itself because the two kind of get stuck together over time. All right, so we're gonna zoom back out here and remove that metal bracket. Okay, so by the way, sorry for the poor focus here. I didn't notice the camera focus was off. You're definitely gonna get the gist of what I'm doing here. I just wish you had better focus on the actual part of the project and not on the awesome blue ABS cable that is right in front of the camera. But you can see we removed the bracket, came off pretty easy, and the sway bar has complete mobility. You'll probably want to use your left hand to maneuver the sway bar so that you can position the bushing to come off. So the bushing is split in half. Um, it's made that way, and it has a split down the middle. And so if you look at the new one, you'll see exactly how it, it works. But, um, and one thing I did off camera here that you don't see is cleaning the spot where the old sway bar bushing was. Um, so you want to take a rag, put it in there, and just clean that area up because a lot of sand you know, and grit has gotten underneath there. So you take some grease and you want to grease the new bushing very well. Anywhere that metal is going to touch, which is pretty much this entire thing except for the two sides of it. And it wouldn't hurt if you put grease there. 
But anyways, um, inside and outside, you don't want metal just uh, on dry rubber. It will squeak when you go around curves and ask me how I know that and you will find out that I have done it. All right, so um, putting the new bushing in is not too difficult. Um, using the bar pressure itself by pushing down with your left hand on the sway bar and then using a screwdriver to separate the two pieces of rubber, you should be able to get it to slide pretty easily into place. You'll see it just pop in. Just like that. So now you want to clean up the bracket. Um, just take a rag again, clean out any sand that has gotten down into the bracket. And because you've had to push the bar through the bushing where you put the grease, it never hurts to put a little bit more grease onto the bracket. There's different thoughts about how you would put this grease on. Some don't put it on the outside first. You can see some wear points that have taken place on the bracket, so you definitely want to touch those up. Make sure at least you get grease on those. And then we just reapply the bracket and put the bolts back in. Pretty simple process. So I think we'll speed up the video so you can not waste too much time watching how this part's done. Okay, so we get the bolts put back in and tighten everything up. Uh, one thing I would recommend to you always is when you're putting things like sway bar end links, um, when you're changing brakes, things like this, you always want to use thread locker on the threads that are critical to the operation of the car. So the sway bar end link is, I would say it's critical. Nothing catastrophic would happen, but if you went around a corner and the sway bar end link wasn't attached, it would feel like the car was falling much more than it should be. Um, which could cause you to lose control of the car if you weren't expecting that. So I always supply a little th thread locker, just holds the nut on, um, makes it so the nut can't back itself back out. So I hope this video helped you. If it did, you can really help me a lot by subscribing to my channel. It really makes a difference and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you very much.